Hi everyone, Sean here with Reality Forge. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use VDBs in Unreal Engine 5.4 for VFX in games or cinematics. We'll first set up our landscape with a height map, learn how to quickly bring VDBs into Unreal, fix problems like shadows, and learn how to also modify our VDBs. We'll take a look at image-based lighting or an HDRI and how to use these VDBs in a cinematic sequence. Let's begin by launching Unreal Engine 5.4.2. And in this video, we're going to be using the vehicle template. I'm going to name this project VDB Canyon. Once Unreal Engine starts, click on File, New Level, choose Basic, and then hit Create. Next, save your level in its own Maps folder. So right-click, New Folder, name it Maps, double-click to open it, and name your level Canyon. Start by deleting the floor, and then we're going to go into Landscape mode by clicking up here and then choosing Landscape. Click on Import from File, and then use the Volcano Canyon height map that we've provided in the description for this video. If you're using the height map we provided, you're going to need to make some changes to your scale X, Y, and Z before importing your landscape. These have a connection to the height, scale, and the resolution of the Gaia file, and I've put all the calculations for this on screen. Once you're done setting up your scale, we're going to minimize this view by clicking on this button here and maximize our back view. We're going to move our landscape slightly higher, and I'm using Using a value of 64610.0. Once this is done, we're going to minimize this view, maximize our perspective view, zoom out, and then click on import. If you're using the height map we provided and you're following along, this is what you should see when you click import. Now we're going to use a VDB to show smoke coming out of that volcano. I'm using free VDBs that you can find on the Jenga FX website. There's two that's going to be used in this video. The first is this fire plume for the demonstration and then eventually the industrial chimney smoke for our volcano. To get started, first let's create a new folder and name this folder VDB. Double click to open this folder and I'm going to create two new folders within this. One is going to be called Fire Plume and the other one is going to be called Chimney Smoke. Double click to open the Fire Plume folder and then right click and choose Import. Then select the first VDB in the sequence of VDB files that you downloaded. You're then going to get this pop-up specifying what attributes of the VDB are going to A and B. So the A channel has the density which is our smoke and the B channel has our flames. After our VDB sequence gets imported, click on All and search for Sparse. You're looking for this material right here. Now this is a master material with all its parameters set up, so we're going to right click and choose create material instance. I'm going to name this SVT underscore fire plume. Now it's going to vanish because we have sparse in the search box up here. So we're going to change this to SVT, navigate to the fire plume folder and drag and drop it over here and then choose move. Navigate to the fire plume folder and double click on the material instance you just created. On the right under parameters, expand global texture parameter values, override sparse volume texture and then select the file that was created from your VDB sequence. Back in your level, click on quickly add a project and leave your mouse over all classes and type HET. Drag this actor, put it in the level, and then in the details panel for this actor, you want to specify that material instance we created. So SVT underscore fire plume. And that's how easy it is to get a VDB running in Unreal Engine 5.4. So let's take a moment here and discuss some of the features that VDBs have. Firstly, they interact with light. So if you move your directional light around, you can see the shadows changing as expected. You can select your volume, make sure playing and looping are set to true, and then you'll have an animated VDB. You can also make changes to the parameters in the material instance we created. So if I override black body scale and take it down to zero, the flames are no longer visible. You can make changes to the black body temperature scale to make the flames appear more intense or less. You can even tint the black body so we can have blue flames or pink flames or make changes to the density so we can make the smoke appear less thick or more. You may have noticed our animated VDB isn't casting any shadow. So if you go to your project settings and search for shadow, look for this checkbox over here, enable it, and then restart Unreal Engine. Now our VDB is casting a shadow, the shadow is animated as well, and it's responding to changes in our directional light. Now you may have noticed the quality of these shadows isn't great, so you can use this console command that I have on screen here to change this value from its default of 512 to say 2048, and you'll get much better shadows. With the basics of VDB out of the way, we're now going to import that second chimney smoke VDB to use for our volcano. Process is exactly the same. We're going to navigate to the folder that we downloaded, select the first VDB in the sequence, and then click open. The same pop-up is going to show up, click on import, and then once the import is complete, Navigate to your Fire Bloom folder and duplicate the material instance we created to save time. Rename this to SVT Chimney Smoke and then drag and drop this into the Chimney Smoke folder and then click on Move. Because we duplicated SVT underscore Fire Bloom, SVT Chimney Smoke is using the Fire Bloom VDB sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to the Chimney Smoke one instead. Then once again, from the Quickly Adder project, we're going to drag this actor and place it right on top of our volcano and specify SVT Chimney Smoke. A number of problems here, it's not visible. So let's start by scaling this up and moving closer to the VDB actor. So you can see it fades in the closer we get, but it also fades out the further we move away. 
Once again, we're going to use a console command to fix this. So I've left it on screen if you're following along. We need to set the volume's max trace distance to 500,000. This is going to allow your VDB volume to be visible at much larger distances. So let's move this up and scale it up a little bit to match the opening in our volcano. And additionally, also get into position where we're going to make our cinematic from. I'm going to rotate the volume so the smoke is blowing from the left to the right. And I'm also going to enable playing and looping. Another console command I find quite useful is setting the volume's indirect lighting to a value of 1. This helps blend the VDB a little bit better with the environment. Now we've used a bunch of console commands and they're all going to get reset every time you open your project. So open the default engine.ini with an application like Notepad and paste all the commands over here. Now every time we open our project, everything is going to look as expected. So let's now go and set up the materials on our landscape. I'm going to make a new folder, call this materials, double click to open this and create a new material in here and call it mm underscore landscape. Double click to open your material and then on the right, select your domain and then on the left, make sure use material attributes is set to true. Drag a wire out from here and search for blend material attributes. Create a new folder and name this folder landscape maps. In this folder, you're going to right click and choose import and then select the Volcano Canyon snow map that we've provided in the description of this video. This texture on its red channel has information where the snow will be visible and where the rocks will be visible. So if you disable alpha, blue and green, you'll see a black and white map that's going to help the blend material attributes decide where snow is visible and where rocks are visible. Drag and drop this texture into your graph and connect the red channel to our blend alpha. For our materials, we're using the Quicks and Mega Scans. I'm using this Lava Stone Ripple and this windswept snowy stones. I'm going to put the IDs for both of these mega scans in the description of this video. Just like we do in our other videos, we're going to navigate to the mega scans folder. I'm going to open the lava stone ripple folder and drag and drop all three textures into the graph. Then I'm going to use a set material attributes node. And here on the left, I'm going to add base color, normal, ambient occlusion, roughness, and displacement. We're going to connect our base colors RGB to the base color pin, the normal RGB to the normal pin, the red pin to ambient occlusion, the green pin to roughness, and the blue pin to displacement. Then I'm going to drag a pin out from here and add a named reroute. Let's name this Quixel Lava Stone Ripple. Named reroutes are a great way to keep your graph really clean because you can access whatever's being plugged into it anywhere else in the graph. So I'm just repeating the same process here for the snow. Like we did before, we're adding a named reroute and we're going to call this Quixel Snow. Back over at our blend material attributes node, we're going to use the Quixel Snow named reroute into B and the Lava Stone Ripple named reroute into A. Right click on your master material and choose create material instance. I'm going to name this mi underscore landscape. Then select your material, select the landscape and then assign your material instance to the material slot on your landscape. Now it's probably not looking as expected because the map that we're using to define where the rocks and the snow are visible is too small and it's styling. To make this texture larger, we're going to use a landscape layer coordinates node and connect it to the UV pin on our texture sample. Then I'm going to change the mapping scale to 4033, which is the size of our image. Now your landscape should be looking as expected, but if you go close to any surface, you'll notice our mega scans are also tiling. Once again, we're going to use the landscape layer coordinates node to make our textures larger. We're also going to use a multiply node and a constant node. Plug the constant to the B pin and the layer coordinates to the A pin. Set the constant to a value of one and connect the output of this to all the UV pins on your mega scan textures. Right click on your constant and convert it to a parameter. I'm going to name this parameter tiling lava rocks because we're using a material instance. I want to be able to access this in the instance directly. I'm going to copy and paste my layer coordinates and my multiply node. I'm going to connect the output of this to the UV pins on each of our snow textures. And like we did earlier, put down a constant. Connect this to the B pin, set the default value to 1, and then convert it to a parameter. This is going to be called tiling snow. After applying and saving your material, go back to your landscape and double click on the material instance. You'll see both your parameters over here. Let's override both these parameters and set them to a value of 0.1. You can play around with these values and experiment to find a look you want, but this is what I'm using. Even after making our textures larger, there's still some tiling on the snow. Let's move all of our snow nodes to the right and all of these nodes to the left to create some space in the middle here. Then I'm going to add a texture variation node. Bit of a tip here, you can shift drag all of your wires together just like this so you don't have to go one by one. We're going to add our multiplied UVs to the UV input and we're also going to add a static bool and set it to true so that it's using random rotation and scale. Now our tiling on the snow is looking a lot better without us having to use a very large texture scale. For our lighting, we're going to be using an HDRI from Polyhaven. Just remember not to use EXR but use HDR instead. To use this HDRI, we need to enable a plugin. In the plugins window, search for HDRI and you'll see the HDRI backdrop plugin. Enable this and restart Unreal. Once Unreal restarts, delete all of the actors that come with your basic level then click on the quickly add to project and under lights, you'll see an HDRI backdrop. 
drag and drop this into your scene. We can see some lighting changes, but there's no background. That's because the HDRI backdrop is too small. So I'm going to click on it and change the size to 50,000. Then we're going to move it a little lower so it's not intersecting with our floor. And now it's working as intended. We're getting lighting information and we have a background. Right click, create a new folder, name this folder HDRI. In this folder, you're going to import the HDR that you downloaded from Polyhaven. Then select the HDRI backdrop and assign the HDR you downloaded to it. Now I want my scene to be a little darker, so I'm going to put down a post-process volume. And in the details panel for this post-process volume, we're going to type INF to make sure infinite extent is true. Clear the search and expand the exposure section. Set the metering mode to manual and the exposure compensation to a value of 8. Unlike the fire plume, the chimney smoke VDB had nothing set to attributes B, so there was no flames. I'm going to override this in the material instance and disable temperature or attributes B. Now we've got some flames coming even in our chimney smoke VDB. To conclude this video, I'm just going to add some notes here as to changes I made before rendering out the cinematic. I took down the tiling on our rocks because I could see some texture repetition and I also took down the temperature of our scene in our post-process volume. VDBs can be used with sequencer and if you're making a cinematic, don't leave your VDB on playing and looping. You may get some jumps. So add the volume, add the component, and then add a frame track. In this example, at frame zero, we're also going to ensure that our VDB is at frame zero and then add a keyframe. I'm then going to move to frame 150 and ensure our VDB is also set to 150 before adding a keyframe. Because these keyframes will have ease in and ease out, make sure to right click and set them to linear. Now you can scrub through your sequence and your VDB will play correctly. I then put down a camera and created some very basic keyframes for our camera move. To make our volcano pop more, I put a point light right in the center of that opening. I used a fairly large attenuation radius, set the color to red and turned up the intensity. I also increased the black body scale to a value of three on our VDB material instance to make those flames appear brighter. And then I finally added an exponential height fog with volumetric set to true in its details panel. And with that, you now know how to incorporate VDBs into your Unreal Engine projects. In our next video, we're going to use the vehicle template and take recorder to create a cinematic of a car driving through this canyon. With that said, give us a like, give us a sub, let us know in the comments what you thought about this video, and I will see you in the next one.